Giddy up, IB Physics students, because now we are learning about vectors. And we're going to talk about how to add them, subtract them, break them into components, which is awesome because it will allow you to then commit crimes with both magnitude and direction. Let's talk about the difference between scalars and vectors. It's pretty easy. Scalars have no direction. It's just a, it's just a value or a magnitude. For example, if I have let's say twenty dollars or so many pesos that's just a measurement of size I don't have any dollars or pesos in a particular direction but for a vector it has direction I might run five kilometers to the south and so I have the magnitude of five and the direction is south uh, side note one of my favorite evil supervillains was the villain vector from Despicable Me who created crimes with size and magnitude, which I thought was pretty funny. With your new earth-shattering knowledge that vectors have direction and scalars do not, pause it and see if you can label each of these terms along here as falling into the scalar or the vector category. Hopefully, after that pause, you have found, boom, that you put them all in the right spot. As you add two vectors in a graphical method, we call it the head-to-tail method. And what that basically consists of, you take one vector, and its head is up here. You put the tail of the other one on it, and you add it together. And then your resultant vector always goes from where you started to where you ended. And you get what we call the resultant vector here. So take out a piece of paper, hope you have one, pause it and try and find the resultant vector from this vector addition problem here. For this vector addition problem, uh, that's not what I meant to do, I've got here a four kilometer east vector and I've got the three kilometer northeast vector and I'm gonna add them together. So I start with one then I take the second one and I put its tail on the head of the first one. Now for my resultant vector, I go from this, where I started from and I draw a vector to the end and the resultant vector is that he went however many kilometers the length of this would represent in a somewhat northeasterly fashion. Now the order does not matter. I could, if I wanted to, start with the northeast vector, put on the east vector, and then I end up drawing a resultant that would be from here to here. And you can see that these are the same resultant vector. So order of vector addition does not matter. If you have a vector that's going at kind of an angle, funny or not, on one of your axes of choice, it helps to break it into components. For example, you might want to know with this 7.5 meter per second vector going at 35 degrees below the horizontal, you might want to know how much of this vector is directed along my horizontal axis and how much of this vector is directed along my vertical axis and you turn that into a right triangle and you look at this as the adjacent leg, this as your opposite leg, and this as your hypotenuse, of course. Uh, and then you do some trig. If you are trying to find the adjacent leg of a triangle, uh, the adjacent leg uh, is going to be your hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle, and your opposite is going to be the hypotenuse times the sine of your angle. Take a minute, see if you can calculate these values here, and you should get that the horizontal velocity, or the velocity in the easterly direction, is going to be uh, your 7.5 times the cosine of 35 degrees, which I got as about 6.1 meters per second. 
and hopefully you calculated your uh, v sub y as being uh, the 7.5 times the sine of 35 degrees, which I got as being about 4.3 meters per second.